Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Today we're going to talk about something super interesting, which is the, the basic foundational element of winning trading. In other words, coming out on the side of being profitable. So we're going to assume at this point that uh, you understand how to find a great idea and you understand how to not buy into that idea too late. That's a huge problem that we see with new members coming into the bootcamp where they find some ideas that are going up very quickly right now and they can't wait to get involved because they found them, uh, but they're too late. They've missed the optimal entry point. So we're, we're gonna assume that you, you've mastered both of those things. Uh, and if you haven't, you definitely wanna un, uh, join us in the bootcamp because really the bottom line is, Order flow is finding good ideas. Tape reading is making sure you're buying at the right time. You're not buying too late. As you get later into the move in your direction, uh, you learn to need to work the order at that point where you wouldn't go in with full shares. You acknowledge the fact that it's spiked up very quickly uh, in the most recent time period and you've missed that optimal entry. But we're gonna assume right now that you understand all of that. And again, if you don't understand about that, click down and uh, you'll, you'll, see what's, um, you'll see how to do that in the bootcamp. But here's the point that we get across. There's some really super basic math that everybody uh, should know, probably does know, uh, and that's risk reward. And we all know that if we have good risk reward, if we have even a decent profit uh, uh, win ratio, I lost my, lost my thought there for a second. Even if we have a decent win ratio, and you, this is numbers, just pure numbers, if you go all the way down to even less than 50%, around that 40% level, and even slightly below that, if you have three to one risk reward, you still have a, a, uh, the math on your side to be profitable. But let's just say for argument's sake, let's say that you kick ass. Let's say that you follow the order flow. You understand how to read the tape and you're up at 50%, even higher than 50%, you get up to 60% win loss ratios. Then the math is so dramatically in your favor that it's hard, you, you, you actually have to make money assuming that you take trades with a one risk versus three reward and you hit at least that 50% uh, win ratio. Assuming you keep your losses where they're supposed to be. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I, even myself, you can see the books I have back here. I'm constantly reading, constantly uh, reiterating uh, the foundational stuff because you want to feed your mind with where you want it to stay. You want to feed your mind with keeping it on track. So I'm going over a lot of stuff recently about the math and the win and the win loss ratios and kind of like really thinking through like how can I help everyone uh, with really understand. And here's the key point that I want to make out of everything in this video. You don't need to hit home runs to, to see your account grow every single month. You just need to find the right ideas at the right time. So that's order flow and tape reading, and then understand how to set up trades that have the proper risk reward so that you get paid on a regular basis. Again, I'll, I'll do it for effect. So you see your account go up and up and up and up. The problem, and it's universally agreed, the problem for most newer traders, or even somebody who's not new, but is not making money, can't get paid on a regular basis, is they're trading too big and they're trying to get too big of a win uh, on a, on a every trade basis. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if, if that's your strategy. If your strategy is I'm going big or I'm going home, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're going to have wild swings in your profit and loss statement. You're going to have wild swings in your open positions. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I like to have a nice smooth equity curve and I like to know exactly where I'm getting in and out. And that's a big part of what we're about to discuss, knowing exactly where to get in and out. Getting in is not really super challenging. You could have any one of a number of uh, entry signals. There's, there's probably thousands of them, honestly. Uh, but the reward part, that's the part that really everybody has a problem with. It's, okay, tell me how I risk the right amount of money to when it starts to move in my favor. And if I do it over and over and over and over again, how do I get paid? How do I look at a chart and say, okay, I know exactly where I'm getting out. And that's my minimum profit target. When you get that up there and that's your minimum profit target, now you know, okay, that's where I'm getting in. That's the amount of risk I'm taking. It needs to go from here to here. That justifies the trade. And if I do it over and over and over again, this is where the account goes like this. The problem is where, where we we're willing to risk, you know, this much and we, and every trade we want to kind of make all the way up here. That's not realistic. 
But here's the, here's the, <laughs> here's the crazy part. It's not even necessary. That's the part that so many traders don't understand. They want to, they want to hit these massive, massive winners uh, because you've seen some of these stocks, which are, are, are more the outliers than uh, the norm, because we, we want to trade what the norm is. We want to trade what normally happens. If we get these windfall profits that explode in our favor, awesome. I'm not saying uh, there's anything wrong with it. So please don't take what I'm saying out of context. What I am saying, however, is if you get in here and this represents three, compared to the one that you have to risk, again, if you understand order flow, if you understand tape reading, you do it over and over and over again, that's where the consistency comes from. I'm, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I've been there. Everybody that comes into the boot camp comes into the boot camp because there's something missing. It's that consistency of booking profits in exchange for the risk that you're willing to accept. Look, let's face it, if you're watching this right now, if you have a trading account, you don't have a problem taking risk you have a problem with not making money. <laughs> it, it's really that simple because we all get annoyed at losses. We get pissed off at losses. But look, let's face it. I, I, I talk about this all the time. If you're running a business and you're not making any money, paying the electric bill sucks. You, you're like, oh gosh, I, I got to pay the, and it sucks. And the rent sucks. But if you're running a business that every single week, every single month, you say, okay, we're making good money. We're making good money. We're making good money. And there's plenty of money around. Those losses don't, the, the losses don't matter. The expenses don't matter. You pay the electric bill because you've got plenty of money in the account. Trading's the same exact way. The problem is that we're not trying to make good money, good money, good money, good money. You, you have these unrealistic expectations of what it requires to see your account go every single month, consistently, consistently, consistently. So that's what we're going to solve today. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going, to, we're going to jump right into volatility, how that volatility translates into profit targets, and then uh, how you can determine the exact place to exit a profitable trade with consistency and complete conviction because the math is on your side. That's the interesting part here. Three to one, two to one, 50%, 60%. You keep it within those numbers, which... Again, it's, it's not that hard to do if you understand order flow and tape reading. Um, all of a sudden, the math just works magically in your favor as opposed to against you, where you are now booking a profit or, or as soon as you hit that target, now you move up your trailing stop. And that's the worst case scenario is your three to one target. But nobody talks about how to come up with the three. Everybody just picks numbers out of their head. Everybody's like, oh, I'm just going to, I want to make three to one and it has to go up to there. But nobody understands where you get the three from. People just pick numbers uh, that sound good or sound amazing. So we're going to take a quick look at the chart. We're going to look at a couple of charts. We're going to discuss volatility, risk, and how that risk translates into a target. So again, if you get nothing else out of this video, I want you to really take this home and make it your mantra. You don't need home runs to win. You don't. You need consistency. All of the profitable traders that I know start out. And even if you play baseball, like I played baseball my whole life, when you hit a home run and you hit a home run good, you're not necessarily swinging for a home run. It's because everything lined up and it just took off. And those, those few circumstances where you just got under the ball a little bit and it takes off, trading's the same way. You're trying to set up great ideas and you have the perfect scenario. And sometimes it's just amazing where it, it just explodes and you hit your target right away and you move it up. But most of the time, you want to set up these ratios of good idea, tape reading, entry, risk, reward. Good idea, tape reading, entry, risk, reward. And that's what we're going to take a look at right now. So we're going to head over to the charts. By the way, if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment below the video. Uh, if you find these videos helpful, definitely subscribe. That would mean the world to me. And if you want to join me in the boot camp, click down and learn about that too. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to start out using Fiverr as an example. And the first thing I want you to notice uh, is the difference, and this is a pretty dramatic difference, the difference in the candles here and here. Now, in, in my universe, in the boot camp, we call these melted candles, uh, where the body of the open and the close are relatively the same. So melted candles mean that the open and the close are basically the same price. So they traveled all over the place, that candle melted down to a small body versus opportunities like this where the size of the candle is larger. And I call those energy candlesticks because a lot of energy happened between the open and the close. It opened down here and closed all the way up here, big green, or opened all the way up here, closed down here, big red. So what does that have to do with anything, right? So we're not gonna talk about order flow today. We're not gonna talk about uh, tape reading today. That's exclusive to really getting into the, the nitty gritty of that in the boot camp. However, what we are gonna talk about today 
is how this size of the candle affects your reward potential and how we get that three to one math working in our favor. So again, so we could do it over and over and over again without feeling like we need to hit a home run. So in this window over here, compared to this window over here, you can see the increase in volatility where you get energy candles versus indecision candles, where you get melted candles. The size of the moves during melted candles is much smaller. The size of the moves during energy candlesticks is much larger. Now, why is that important? Why does that matter? Because the current volatility that you're trading is going to dictate your expected profit potential. Just let that sink in for a second. The more volatile the stock you're trading, you can expect a wider profit target in exchange for the extra risk that you have to take because of the volatility. And when I say risk, I mean the risk and the, the distance between your entry and your stop loss versus tighter candlesticks. There's a lower volatility there. So the lower volatility is going to, in that moment, have a lower expectation for follow through. So what does that mean? Right. What is what exactly? OK, that's great. I can recognize it over there. I can recognize it over there. Great. Pete. You gave us two big differences. Right. <clears throat> well, let's talk about the actual ratio right now. <clears throat> if we understand the ratio is risking one to make three, what is the easiest part of trading? I'm actually going to come back on the screen for just one second. What is the easiest part of trading? <clears throat> it's identifying a stop loss. What's the hardest part of trading? How do I know exactly where to get out of a winner? Like you could, anybody, even somebody looking at charts for the first time in the first day could determine, okay, that's where I'm getting in. And I could reasonably see a stop loss there because I read that on page 52 of the book and everybody says you put your stop loss just outside of that area, right? So it's not hard. So what, what's amazing is we all have the capacity to understand the easiest part, which is there's my entry, there's my, and there's my stop loss. What we don't do, <laughs> which is kind of um, unique in the way that we're about to discuss it, is you say, okay, I know I want to make on this trade. I know I want to make as much as I can. I also understand the math works in my favor if I'm doing three to one. But the problem is people want 10 to one, 21, 30 to one, because those 20 baggers that they saw on television or some idiot on in a forum someplace bragging about how they bought something at we're all the way down here. And, all, and that, that happens once in a blue moon. <clears throat> So what is the risk? The risk is, let's just say for argument's sake, if I have to risk on a day trade or a swing trade, it doesn't matter, you're risking a dollar, just to keep the math simple. If the risk is a dollar, and you know that you need to make three versus that one to make the math work, to be a massively consistent trader, you have to take that one and triple it. And that's why I just started out with the volatility. Sometimes the volatility on the risk of one, the distance between the entry and the exit is a dollar, maybe where there's a bunch of melted candles. Sometimes the risk on the one is $3. So in this case, if the risk is $3, three times three is nine. So in the second scenario, you need to make $9. In the first scenario, you only need to make $3. So the volatility of the individual stock that you're watching will tell you what is reasonably expected from a profit potential and it will give you the exact price think about what i just said it will literally give you the exact price because if the distance here is a dollar from high to low or from entry to entry to um exit entry to stop loss right that's a dollar let's say the top of this candle is where you're getting in and the top of that candle is fifty dollars again just using round numbers the top of that candle is $50 and you know you need to risk a dollar on this trade and you need to make three in order to make that math work. So if three is the profit against the one risk and your entry is 50, where's your exit target to make money over and over and over again and have an exact price to get out? It's 53. Your stop loss, your distance between your entry and your exit is literally telling you the risk and what the reward is. But for some reason over the years, that simple math gets lost because we get greedy. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. If you understand order flow, tape reading, setting up good trades, where you're above 40%, pushing 50%, pushing 60%, <clears throat> and you understand what I just taught you about 
how to set a profit target based on your risk. You'll never enter a trade again, not knowing where you want to get out for a profitable trade, not knowing where it makes sense. You'll know exactly where to get out. You'll know exactly what the target is. But here's the kind of cool thing. If you look at a stock, this is good. By the way, I'm going to sell this just a little, little bit here. If you understand what we just discussed, and you might have to watch it more than once, you're going to find some opportunities where a stock maybe just had one giant candle out of nowhere. And you're like, that's the entry. I want to get in there. And you see the candle had a $20 candle yesterday. And you're like, I'm not going to, I'm going to risk $20 to put this trade on because this stock's going to the moon, right? But then you look over and you're like, the stock normally goes 22 <laughs> when it normally has a bullish rally. So now, you, now you're going to stop yourself from taking the trade. Think about that. You're going to eliminate those trades where you feel like as soon as you put it on, they're losing trades because the reward potential is not realistic for the risk you have to take. This is some deep stuff here, but when you really get it, it's super simple, basic math that if you look over and you say, well, I have to risk 20 and it normally goes 22, why would I take that trade despite the fact that the stock just exploded? So you're going to start to find yourself now looking for the risk that is normal for what that stock can normally produce from a profit perspective. So it's just really simple, basic math, but here's what it does. It gives you clarity. You're not looking for home runs anymore. You're not looking for the super secret exit technique for the winning trade. You're looking for the minimum profit target that's three to one. And if it keeps going past that, awesome. Trail a stop, have a stop somewhere out in the blue, that's fine, but you need to, no, that's the, that's the least you're going to say, I'm walking out of this deal with at least that amount. And you do it over and over and over again. And all of a sudden you're looking at charts now. You're like, okay, I recognize the volatility. Okay. I see my risk. Now I know exactly where my profit target is. Now just let the trade unfold. If I keep losing one and making three, losing one and making three, the numbers become pretty dramatic. And we'll, we'll actually show you this. We'll end the video on this. So you could take a look at it um, on the screen because the math is just pretty amazing. So this is some basic math at 50% with a two to one risk reward. So you make, I, we just kept the number simple here. If you make $100 on your five winning trades and you lose one of that, so two to one, 50. So you have $500 in profits and $250 in losses, you're going to net 250. If you do three to one with the same ratios, you're gonna net 500. That's only at 50%. So that basically means Every 10 trades, you're going to come out net profitable by this amount, depending on the share size. Here's where it gets crazy. Now, if we do basic math at 60%, so that means six out of 10 trades are profitable. At two to one, we come out net profitable $400. And again, this is based on however, this is just basic math of $100 or $1,000. It doesn't matter. You can extrapolate for your own numbers. But here's where it gets really amazing. If you're good enough and you basically follow what we do, 60% at three to one translates into $700 in profits in every 10 trades, only based on making $150 per trade. So what do you make per trade? What if you make 1500 per trade and you risk 500? All of a sudden this number is $7,000 in profits for every 10 trades by being disciplined and following exactly what we just talked about. This is some pretty deep stuff here because all of the mystery of trading now is vanished. <clears throat> assuming you understand order flow, assuming you're not buying too late, which screws up these numbers. And that's the, that's the tape reading part of it. And assuming you understand what I just talked about with volatility of that individual stock setting up the trade itself. So it's some pretty awesome stuff. Like we, we, when you really drill down into tape reading and you really drill down into trading, you probably have the skills to do this successfully, but there's something missing. If there's something missing, it's, it's these little pieces where you take all that pressure of trying to hit a home run out of the trade, you suck it out of the equation. And now you're like, okay, I got to risk a dollar. Where's three? All of a sudden the sky's clear up and, and it's not confusing anymore about where to get out of a trade. The problem comes in is when you get greedy. The problem comes in when you want to hit home runs all the time and you're taking these monster swings back and forth. And then you're like, ah, trading doesn't work. It doesn't work because you weren't doing it professionally. And when I say professionally, <clears throat> I'm not talking about quitting a job. I'm talking about in a structured, systematic way where you expect to make money if you follow your rules, provided you have rules in the first place, provided you have an edge in the first place. And that's what it means to trade like a pro. You don't have to quit your job, but you do have to do it in a systematic way, which is how anybody runs a business. 
businesses that are massively successful aren't lucky. It's because they put in the hours to read and do the stuff that we just talked about. If you have any questions about this, definitely click down and leave me a comment. Uh, subscribe to the video. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, and if you want to join me in real time and see how we do this, uh, definitely click down and learn about the bootcamp. Have a great day, everyone.